Hey there, it's Michelle. Thought I'd do a little video today. I haven't had time for one for quite a few days now, so Tuesdays I get half a day off, so that's kind of nice. But anyway, I'm going to get into the topic of narcissism. That's what I'm going to keep my topic on, mostly on this channel, so. Um, actually got hoovered on Sunday. <laughs> you know, tried to be sucked in. Not, you know, not the most recent narcissist. It's the one that I, I had mentioned in a previous video that he had told me that, you know, I love you on the first date, you know, him, yeah, every two months. It was three this time, but yeah. So I get a text on Sunday. Uh, I think he said, so how you been? And you know what, these narcissists, you cannot show emotion. Don't let them know. I mean, I don't like the guy, so I'm not interested at all. You know, I did like him at first, and at first he kept me emotional, but now, you know, he doesn't cause me any emotion. And I kind of like to play it to where you keep him just in the dark. So I just said, he said, so how you been? I said, you know, busy. That's all I wrote was busy. You know, he texted back, and um, he said, well, I can tell it's not a good time. You're busy. Um, I hope you've been all right. And I said, I'm okay. And that was it. In up into conversation. You don't want to tell him too much. You know, as far as he knows, I'm okay and I'm busy. And that's how you keep it. You don't give him any emotions of anger. You don't give him any emotions of happiness. You just don't show them any emotions because they feed off of that. You know, if, if he if he had picked up the vibe that I was happy to hear from him or even mad, you know, he would have ran with that and the conversation would have went on all night and he would be trying to get in my pants. I'm just, you know, saying that's how they operate. You can't show them emotion. You just have to act like you don't care or don't reply at all and just block them. The only reason I do that with him is just to have a little fun because I know he's going to be doing it every two to three months. So, you know. Just trying to give, you know, I like to give them a little taste of their own medicine just for fun. Especially when I don't give a shit about them. You know, I don't care about that man at all. So, just thought I'd bring that up. You know, they'll, they'll never stop. They'll, they never do. It's every two or three months. It doesn't matter, you know, what you say or do. They will always come back. They will always hoover. And I know as nasty as I got with this last narcissist, and I mean it got nasty. Just let enough time go by. Just let enough time go by. I wouldn't doubt it. You know, because they always get desperate. They always run out of supply. You know, they always have to replace it. They always have to find secondary. They always have to keep this in motion. They can't just be with one person. They have to have several lined up. You know, it's just, it's, <laughs> like I said, it's a cycle. It's a cycle, and they have to keep that cycle going, so. Alrighty. I'm going to talk a little bit about, like I said, the necessary anger that you have to get to be able to get out of the whole situation in general. And sort of what leads you up to that, you know. And You know, that was just my experience. I had to get angry. If I hadn't have got angry, I would have continued just letting this man, you know, come in my house and take advantage of me. So, I mean you just can't do that with people you're just you're going to end up hurting yourself in so many ways you just don't even realize until it's too late so you know after being an emotional toilet for so many years um and after you rid yourself of the evil en entity you know and it seems to you know leave you with a lot of negativity in your life um you know it's not entirely the clown's fault it's just it just seems like after so many years of being manipulated, lied to, cheated on, you know, just and going back and going back and going back. Um, I don't know if it's their negative energy they leave with you, if they leave it in your house. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's not even... I, it has to be their negative energy, but it just seems like everything goes sour in your life, you know. The narcissist, they move on with somebody else. You're left with nothing. You're left with emptiness. I mean, you have a lot of things going on, and it just seems like everything goes wrong, not just emotionally, physically. From them, it's just general things in your life, you know, just general things. You, you seem to be financially drained. Um, you're... 
you're just empty. You're struggling. You're emotionally, mentally drained. You're trying to focus on your work. You're trying to focus on everyday activities. Um, you're trying to sleep. You can't, you know, you just, you're just having a very hard time functioning in general. And it seems like all this negative energy that you've absorbed it from these people from so many years and you're kind of stuck with it so you have to figure out how to work your way through it um, and it seems to be pretty pretty strong from what I've experienced anyway I mean just everything in your life just seems to go to shit you know, and the narcissist they just move on with somebody else so, you know, after doing all that, you know, you're emotionally, financially, mentally struggling, you know, you're trying to work, you're trying to live your life every day, um, you're trying to do your everyday activities, you know, bad things seem to happen more than usual, you know, anything from, you know, getting behind on your bills, you might have a car malfunction, you might have, you might lose a job. You might have a family member that gets sick, you know, it, it just, it just a lot of different things seem to, when you have negative energy that you're left with seems to, it just works negative in your life, has been my experience. You know, hopefully, hopefully that, that part can be over with after you get rid of the evil thing. It should be after some time, you know, you just have to take it upon yourself to improve your life and it's not easy. It's just not, it's not easy. You know, and like I said, they just, they, they'll move on to the next unsuspecting, gullible woman. Um, you know, he'll just pull his Escalade up in her driveway now instead of mine and act like he owns her house instead of mine. So, you know, I kind of feel sorry for her because I can see from over here what's going on. You know, I've seen the lies. I, I've seen, I've seen everything, you know, and he's just doing the same thing to her that he's done to countless other women you know he's pulled up in many women's driveways and just you know acts like he owns the place because in his mind he does you know he does he doesn't look at narcissists they don't look at you as an individual as a human being they look at you as an appliance say you know, well, you know, I get to use this person's house. I get to use this person's vehicle. Um, this person might be a good business prospect for me. This person may be able to financially support me. Um, this person uh, might be able to, you know, better my life in whatever way. Um, you know, that's how they look at you. It's not that they like you as an individual. Now, they will study and see what you like, and they'll transform into somebody that you think that you like only because they're going on you know what they see and what they think will make you happy that's how they operate um, and the main supply has to have certain qualities the main supply cannot be like a hooker off the street you know that has no job and no home that's not gonna serve the narcissist that might serve his dick you know for five or ten minutes and sure he might take advantage of it but that's not gonna serve him as a main supply you know a prostitute is more along the lines of the secondary um, so yeah I mean you have to be as good as or better than the narcissist They're, they have to have you have to have and not only that I think they like to feed off the of good people and their good energy um, like my narcissist he doesn't believe in God he's sort of satanic if you will um, he's always ending up with these Christian women I'm a Christian the new supply claims to be a Christian the old supply is a Christian um, so it's like they feed off of your good energy and they're making themselves look good because they're with a Christian woman you know everybody thinks they, they might be a good person you know it's just it's all an act and I don't know why they can't just stick to their own type it must be too dysfunctional you know any relationship you have with one is dysfunctional but I imagine when they are with their own type like his ex-wife I mean they can make it last a while but it's just total you know dysfunction with the fighting and the drama all the situations you know that that two dysfunctional people can provide each other you know they're feeding off your good qualities and they're dumping their 
their bad qualities onto you like an emotional toilet. You know, this has just been my experience. Um, so, you know, this is just a few more things that start, you know, this leads to all the anger. This just leads up to it, you know. You've been the through the back and forth. You've seen them move on to the new supply. You, you've seen them actually... I don't... I didn't look to see where the new supply lived. Didn't have to. All I had to do was go down to the local, you know, road that everybody travels around here where all the shopping is and watching pull up in her damn driveway, you know, pull up on her street and pull up in her driveway. I didn't want to know. I knew she lived around here close somewhere because he, you know, if he did show up here, he'd be 10 minutes and he'd be here. But, <clears throat> you know, like I said, I didn't go looking for that. It's just what I see, you know, and then I see his Escalade backed up in her driveway all the way to the garage like he owns the fucking house. <laughs> like I said, in his mind, he owns the house, okay? That's how they operate. In his mind, he lived here and owned mine, too. So, so you know, you're angry. After you see all this, you see what's going on. You know they're not hip to it, you know, but, you know, they're not going to listen to you. They have to find out for themselves. So, you know, you've seen this. You've seen the lying, the stealing, the cheating. You know, you've seen all this in hindsight. The text from the other women. Um, you'll never really catch them cheating red-handed. Um, narcissists are very good at, you know, lying and keeping things secret and, and cheating. They, they're they very good at it. They're rarely caught. I'm sure in some cases they are caught in the act, but most of the time they're not. And I never caught mine in the act, but I did see the text and I saw the evidence on my body. So there's nothing more that I needed to see other than that. You know, he could lie all day long. I've already saw the evidence before me, you know, was just as good as catching him right handed. So, you know, you, you see all this, you're in this situationship you're going through these things um you're you're seeing things in hindsight um they'll have an excuse for it all right off the top of their head they'll have an excuse for everything uh you want to believe it you know inside that it's not right but you choose to believe it because you want to find a good person in there and you choose to believe that they care about you and you choose to believe what they're telling you. But you know inside that it just doesn't add up. And you know what you're seeing. So, You know, now all of this is happening. You're seeing it all in hindsight. You know, years are going by. They've wasted of your time, you know, and never loving you. And, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of. You're kept confused uh, with all the excuses they give you. Um, and they're choosing to be in your presence every day, which is another big confusion thing. Um, so, I mean, that's just, that's, that's, you're angry. You're angry. Um, and you realize all this, and, and you're just, you're ready to, you're ready to just get rid of the evil thing for good. You know, you are. And you have to. You have to. Once you see all this evidence, there is... You know nothing's going to change. Um, so you just, you have to. You know they're going to move on with somebody else. You even tell yourself that. You know that's going to happen, that you're going to have to um, look at it probably. It's going to be in your face. Um, but it's a choice that you have to make. You know, if you want to have uh, any kind of emotional health, that's a choice that you have to make. Um, each time, you know, they'll come back and they'll purpose, purposely hurt you even more anyway. So, you know, this is just going to cause more anger each time. You're going to get hurt more and more each time they come back. It's just going to be worse. They're going to do something. They're going to say something to hurt you on purpose. Um, they're going to act like they don't care about you, but they're going to use you. They're going to try to keep you on the side, you know, they're going to keep lying, it's just going to keep getting worse, and you, and you just have to stop, then you know it has to end, and, and sometimes you'll do things that's out of your character, and you're going to look crazy, 
And I think that's what they aim for. They want you to look crazy, you know. They know that they've driven you to this point. Um, so then, you know, the anger takes over. You do some things that's out of your character. Um, and you have to go no contact, and, and you know... You know that no contact is forever. It's it's no contact, no visual, um, no nothing. So you're fighting these, you know, these feelings every day and just getting total revenge. Because let me tell you, the last time, the little situation with the open relationship he claimed to be in, it, it was just so nasty and so hurtful about it. You know, I'm reaching out to the narcissist. Um, he's telling me he's in this open relationship. He uses this opportunity to come to my house, you know, to, you know, do me a favor. And I'm trying to get him over here just so I can talk to him and tell him how I feel, you know. And hopefully, you know, he's still trying to find that good person if he has any feelings about me at all. But no, he comes over. He uses me for sex one last time. Um, you know, basically he leaves, um, he didn't tell me that was going to be the last time he saw me until the next day. And he actually told me that the only reason he did it in the first place is because it was the girlfriend's idea because she had had sex with her ex and this was just a one up, you know, to make them even on their exes. So he actually tells me this. Now, how hurtful can that possibly be and that's what sent me over the top the last time with the anger I acted out I did some things I shouldn't have done I'm gonna make another video on what I actually did um, you know and I wouldn't recommend taking out the revenge it might make you feel good for a few minutes but let me tell you nothing you do I don't care if you slash their tires. I don't care if you burn their house down. I don't care if you hum humiliate them in public. It will only make you feel good for a few minutes, so it's not even worth it. You're still going to be just an emotional mess as they left you in after you feel good for those few minutes. And you're liable to get caught and thrown in jail, arrested, whatever, look crazy, you name it. So that's just what I'm saying. You know, taking out the revenge is just not a good idea. The best revenge is to just better yourself, work on yourself, make you put better people in your life. There are better people out there that will be in your life. It doesn't have to be a romantic, you know, any kind of relationship like that. Just friends. Uh, family, friends, meet new people, date a little bit if you feel like dating. Um, I wouldn't force it. I wouldn't rush it. Um, I tried dating off and on. It's just, it, it, I'm not ready. I wasn't ready. And I just haven't had any mutual attraction with anybody so far. That's just how it, you know, how it's worked out for me. Of course, I haven't really tried to date a whole lot. So... That's all you can do in the revenge. But, yeah, I'm going to make a video about what I did with that. But, um, yeah, that anger, it'll get you because they will they will do things to you that you couldn't imagine, that you wouldn't imagine any human being could do to another. Um, but, yeah, I guess that's about all I have to say about, you know, the necessary anger. You know, after you're objectified... For, for so long you're told that you know you, you've been wasting your time for years and that somebody never loved you um, you know they're coming back to use you and to hurt you and they're with somebody else and you know he went as far as to keep my phone on for six months you know trying to keep you know that little string out there and a little bit of control over here still if they had their choice they would have a room full of all their exes and they would come home to them every night. There'd be like 25, 30, you know, women that they could just have their pick with today, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know. That's how a narcissist operates. But anyway, I hope these videos help somebody and somebody can relate. Um, so I hope y'all have a good evening. I'm going to go in here and cook some dinner. <laughs> My cat. Just walks in and out the door. All right. Well, you all have a good night. Bye-bye.